Sumit Rai, Director Sales, MongoDB Inc., who will talk about how MongoDB, um, the NoSQL database, is empowering businesses to be more agile and scale scalable in India. Please welcome Mr. Rohit Rai. Uh, well, Jacob is now still learning, which is sales. As I told the organizers, that if I don't complete my talk, nobody gets lunch served. <laughs> Good negotiation ploy, right? Just works perfect. So Jacob, lesson number one. Next time, negotiate the lunch. <laughs> Thanks, Jacob. Jacob's a good old friend, so I know, you know, Drupal has been doing really good work. They came in a little before us in India, so I think uh, they were a little smarter. We just got smarter by deciding to come into India. So guys, uh, you know, what I want to really do today is just to kind of give you the vision around MongoDB. Uh, you know, a lot of people here have been using it as I've been meeting people in the uh, you know, exhibit area. A lot of people have come up and said, oh, we've been using this stuff. Clear Trip came up and said, oh, we're using it. I said, thank you so much. You know, there are many others who are using it. Uh, you know, Rediff, Rediff uses us. But the good part about uh, what I want to really talk about is, is change. And uh, Jacob mentioned that. But what I have seen, I've spent enough time establishing open source in the Indian market. I can claim that. Simply because I was working with Red Hat about 10 years back, started that open source revolution perspective. You know, I used to go tell people what Linux was and what Red Hat was. And a lot of the times I would have a question saying, are you selling hats? I said, no. <laughs> I'm going to talk about Linux. Right? And it was that bad. Today, Red Hat is pretty much well established, right? You know, part of that credit I can always claim that I was responsible to a certain extent to make that happen as an individual, while it was a big team that made it happen, but I do feel proud about that. And I've spent time with many other open source companies over a period of time. With each one of these, whenever I worked, I always knew I was coming from behind in technology. The competitor would always in the commercial space have something which is much, much better. We had 30% of it, 40% of it, and we were gaining in terms of closing the gap every time. But we were never, I was never in a position where I could say, oh, well, now I am actually ahead of my commercial competitors. Whether I looked at Linux, whether I looked at Postgres as a database where I worked for some time, whether it was anything else, it was always coming from behind. The commercial option was always ahead. But that trend today has actually started changing. And when the NoSQL phenomenon started happening a few years back, it's just been about five, six years, not, not longer than that. What I realized is that this phenomena is actually starting from ahead. So the other commercial alternatives that exist today are actually going to try and catch up. And so what I realize is that this is an area where I think from a technology perspective, if you're looking at performance, how many people believe MySQL can perform better than Oracle? Raise your hands. I would agree. Oracle will always do better than MySQL. No doubt about it. It's a better database anyway. But you have to pay a hell of a lot of money. A hell of a lot of money. But if you look at the trend that's happening today, how many of you believe that in the areas where MongoDB today is predominantly used as a database, it will perform better than Oracle? You all have not been introduced, but the world is voting by saying, yes, it does. And that's the disruption. Because if you look at the open source market today, it's actually disrupting the way software development was ever done. And MongoDB is leading that in the database space. And we're calling ourselves the general purpose NoSQL database. What I mean by the word general purpose is that our intent is to be available to be used for many application areas and not limit ourselves to just a specific NoSQL domain. We want to make sure that when customers think of Oracle, they can actually go ahead and say, okay, I don't have to run that workload anymore on Oracle because I can run it 
on commodity hardware with MongoDB and it will perform much better than Oracle. That's the key. That phenomena today, I think you must have all seen already on your mobile. I love that phenomena. How many of you use, uh, use Android here? What is Android basically? Yeah, Linux, right? Google does a bad job there. They don't tell you it's Linux. But it's actually Linux. They just basically are using the Linux kernel. Of course, they build a lot of stuff on top of it and made it user friendly. But what's the number one operating system in the mobile space today? Android. You know, a few years back, I was working with Microsoft. I spent time with them. I was the only idiot who was telling them, wake up. Linux will overtake you. And it will overtake you not in the desktop space, but in the mobile space. And they would say, who the hell are you? Get lost. That's exactly what they did. They didn't believe me. Today, where is Windows in the mobile space? Not even relevant. Sorry. That's the truth. And I'm telling you today, when I have when I've started working here, you know, I've spent time with Jacob on you know understanding Drupal. The truth is, five years down the line, we both probably will be here, and you're gonna wonder who's in the database space, you're gonna wonder who's? Aha, uh -huh, who's Oracle? Yeah. Nobody knows Oracle. They don't know I, I, when content management, it's Drupal or something else. That's the, that's the truth. And I think that's the fundamental you know, uh, belief that I have personally, which is why I'm here. I've never worked in any technology company unless I've not felt passionate about it. I, and I'm, why I worked with Microsoft, I'll tell you, because I wanted to teach them how to work with open source. They've learned from it. They've actually moved forward, so I appreciate that. They've done a good job there. They've learned about it. And they've started to cooperate with open source to a much better extent. Today, you don't associate Microsoft in the negative box around open source. They're seen positively. And that is, that's a good thing. So they've done good work there. So I think to you now, today I really want to talk about MongoDB simply because I think fundamentally, how many of you are developers here? Quite a few hands. Don't you hate when your DBA comes back and tells you, I can't change this code. Too much of table, alter table state statements to run. I hate it. And then you're stuck trying to say, okay, we'll try and manage within that. Right? That's a big problem. Most of the times, whenever you're programming to the, to the standard SQL world, you're trying to basically try and think about your code and then start worrying about some tables with rows and columns. Correct? That's always been the problem. But that's a very inefficient way. That's 1974, so a year before I was born. I'm 1975. There was SQL databases were designed in 1974. What was the processor available at that time? Any guesses? I even don't know. Hey, come on. 74, I even don't know. That's why I said I even don't know. I was probably happy having milk. It was not even, SQL was designed at that point of time. And from there, it has always been a patch fix. Patch fix, patch fix, patch fix, patch fix. Because they never inherently rechanged themselves. And today, how is development? What is the most common thing that you use for development? C, C++, Java? Java. What are these? Object-oriented programming languages, right? In some sense, they're object-oriented. And when they're object-oriented, and when you have an object, you've defined something there. Is, wouldn't it be great if your object can straight away be written to the database rather than having to worry about tables and, and columns? That's one part of it. That's a big nuisance. So the guys who actually created MongoDB, you know, uh, Dwight and Elliot, uh, and the other folks who kind of were the co-founders to the MongoDB uh, phenomena, actually were developers who thought about developers and said, today's developers don't want those headaches. They just want to move away from all of this traditional 1970s design and look at the 2000 world and design as per the 21st century. So they basically created this NoSQL concept and they used what is called as a JSON document structure uh, as the mechanism to do that. And that is what is revolutionizing the entire uh, you know, development method and making it much more agile. So I want to quickly... Uh, Yeah, say so what's MongoDB really? It's general purpose, as I mentioned. It's a document database, and it's open source, just like any other open source project that we're going to be talking about here. 
built for today's environment designed for today's application today's scales <coughs> incidentally one of the largest government projects in india i'm not supposed to take its name officially does use mongodb there are many others that also do ready if i mentioned to you earlier is an indian example but there are many names globally who are using mongodb Government, uh, I can understand not taking name of private. Why are not supposed to take government? Maybe we need to take permission. We haven't taken permission from them. They have said we are okay with that. That's that's one of the reasons we haven't. We don't we don't talk about it right now. We're a small company, 300 plus employees, but that's decently good enough and powerful. And we probably have. I think today I can proudly say we are the most well-funded open source company, simply because people believe. that mongo has the most brilliant powerful future available for developers and that's why everybody is betted with that big amount of check that they've given us to go after oracle this money has been given to us to go after oracle we're not going after mysql we're not interested in going after postgres or anything else we want to go after oracle because we need that kind of money to fight that big giant trust me you need that kind of money they have maybe a two and um, two zero rather in front of it in terms of money in the bank to fight us so we need that money now we have the technology advantage also i said right we perform better than oracle wherever we are good now some of the big guys who use us i want to talk about one example just simply because i want to excite you guys to understand one thing that i'm giving you away free trainings for online stuff which anyways you can go and take which we'll talk about but let's look at some of the names that use us sap itself Coincidentally, they have their own database. Very interesting. New York Times, Salesforce does. Salesforce invested into us. Coincidentally, Cisco does. MetLife. I'll tell you, MetLife is a very interesting project because that's a problem that many of you will find when you're working in enterprises. Large number of boxed systems that don't talk to each other, and making them talk to each other by itself is a big project. They had the same problem. Seventy systems that did not allow. Them to see a single view of their customer. Now, I have extended a little bit of my time, but I think it's about five minutes that I'll take more because I don't want to keep you away from lunch. So you guys are going to blame me if you feel extra hungry. That was the guy who held us back. MetLife did a very beautiful thing: is that they struggled with this project. The seventy systems did not talk to each other. Then they came to MongoDB. They were struggling for eight years, and their video is on YouTube. You can actually check it out. And then they said they solved that same problem in three months. And today. When you, when anybody has a MetLife policy or whatever product of theirs, when they call MetLife, MetLife is able to see a single view of that customer and serve them better. Very powerful. This is very interesting for me. I purposely want to come and point it right here and look at the other options. So, if you have not thought about a career here and building skill sets around MongoDB, think hard. you could be missing out i tell you people who invest early in a technology gain the maximum the later you come you are part of the janta so decide this is really go there check it right now that's the trend it's even ahead of ios android or any other stuff very very powerful for you guys that's why i want to keep it the, that's why i kept the session before lunch because you have the whole lunch to think about it Well, the community is growing, and this is where you would use us. I want kind of, you know, leave it to you here, thinking about we're basically an online database. We're not competing with Hadoop. We complement them. So I want to be very clear with them. We don't compete. So there's a lot of confusion that people can have. We're an online database, and we'll complement RDBMS is also at some places, but we'll also compete with them. <coughs> Talked about this. I don't want to kind of get into details of this for you, but I think. what i really want to do is this is all standard stuff what i really want to do is stretch some time please note down this url all of you have access to our free training and this is high quality free training most of the other and this is all online and most of the time people actually charge for training right now it's all free you have a dba track that's available for free a java track that's available for free and a dot net track that's available for free and of course now we have certifications also available so anybody who is interested around that can absolutely do that <coughs> i 
I myself uh, actually am a computer science guy, so I'm going to now take questions from you. But you know what? I did spend some time trying to understand this. It was very easy to pick up, very very easy. Even though I passed out in 1996 from a computer science background, you know the database that we learned at that point of time was DBase in our college, and maybe a little bit of Oracle. But I could fairly quickly pick this up. It was very easy. So I think I suggest spend time there. Uh, you could download the software and use it very quickly. That's not a big challenge. And uh, you know, beyond that, I think we have you know set up a small booth for ourselves here. You know, you could give in your feedback. I just want to let you know we were a little late in the country. We apologize for that. But I think we are here to create an impact and really empower you to be able to do the maximum out of open source. Now, most of the open source companies that were relevant are here already in India. Red Hat is, Novell is. Uh, you know, Drupal is here. Uh, you know, Lifeway has come in into the country. All the big open source relevant projects companies are here. Mongo is also finally here. So that's the good news. I think that's why I really wanted to hold this session before lunch, so that I could make sure that all of you could be here together and we could talk about it. Now, if there are any questions anybody has, you know, I'm open to that. Is there any difference between uh, community and uh, enterprise versions? Uh, yes, there is. We can take it offline. We can take it offline. And we don't compare ourselves with anything around for a simple reason because every use case scenario will define how performance will be. Now, something may work key value pair may work good for something, but that's a very limited use case scenario. That's why I said, right? What I said in the beginning, general purpose. They have very specific applications for one part of it, and that's about it. They, they may perform better than us or they may perform worse than us, doesn't matter. But they have very limited use case. We are, you're going to think about them only when you are trying to solve a specific problem. You're going to think about us when you want to solve any problem. There's a difference. That is why we would say compare ourselves with traditional RDBMSs because we are trying to replace traditional RDBMSs. We are not competing with those key value pair databases. So just in, that's not the right comparison for us to even do. How exactly you migrate? I mean, typically the so I'll tell you one. High level. So what? What? Yeah. So that's a good question. What actually MetLife did was MetLife actually exported their entire data into JSON, and from JSON it was a standard import into MongoDB and really created one single store. So it was a JSON export. So there are various mechanisms. Our our teams can help you with that in terms of arriving on an approach. As I said, I answered that question just a minute back. It depends on how you design. You will get performances comparable or even better. Depends on your situation. But we don't get into, you know, there are specific limit, uh, limited use case databases. We have general purpose databases. So there's a difference there. So uh, MongoDB for, uh, yeah. yeah. MongoDB for WordPress, sir, as in. Has it been ported or what? WordPress or open source? Uh, it's a CMS, right? WordPress. You heard of it? I'll have to check with that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Good. So, thank you so much. Uh, any other final questions? Yeah. Yeah. What about form keys? What about join performances? Joins are not required. That's the beauty of JSON structure. You don't need joins. Joins was the old way where you would have a problem because you had to normalize, you had to think about all of this stuff, and so you would start putting multiple tables up there, then try and pull them together, and finally give the results. That's the old 1974's way of designing around databases, which most of the new age app, you know, database, comp uh, what I would say, users like Facebooks and all try and avoid, because if they have to do that, and by the time they're able to serve you content, you can go back, have lunch, dinner. And then by that time, it will probably come back to you. You know, one more very important point to that. You know, if you look at it traditionally, just to, before we go for lunch, memory was so expensive, right? Few years back, damn expensive. So databases were designed to run on low memory footprint from day one. When the oracles of the world actually realize that okay, now memory is less expensive. They built alternative technologies to try and bring that data in memory, but then started charging a hell lot of money for that technology. 
In MongoDB, you can run everything in memory. I have to pay anything extra. So that's the beauty. Or you don't have to do anything extra from a technology perspective also. It will run all in memory if required. Great, so enjoy your lunch, guys. Thank you so much. <laughs>